solo. Final Girl today in the haunting of Creech Manor. Is that right? <laughs> Why am I having so much trouble lately in my beginnings? It's just called, no, it can't be just called Creech Manor. I don't know. I would tell you the full title, but it's on the back of these boards over here. So that's going to be really hard to do. But I think it's the haunting of Creech Manor. And we got a whole bunch of goodies to show off here today. Let me get to the chat. Sajid, I am only here for the free cookies. <laughs> um, there's something I don't know. Uh, enjoy the cookies. It's great. Silver Fear, Brian, what's up, sir? Dang, you get cookies. And Paper Smith, so stoked to watch this playthrough. I love this game. That's capital L, capital O, capital V, and capital E. Sagitt, don't know, but I know this. No cookies means I am living. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I'll miss you. Send me a postcard. Thanks. All right, look. Uh, thank you to Fan Rider Games for sending me or not sending me, they literally just handing me <laughs> the entire Series 1 box. It, the feature, I forget what they call it, because you have, like, the core box, and you have the feature films, and then there's, like, the big box that fits everything, and it looks really freaking cool on my shelf. Uh, unfortunately, getting it on camera, just, that's not, that's not reasonable with how I have it in my shelf and stuff like that, so maybe one day I will feel motivated to do all that for y'all. That today is not today. Uh... <laughs> Unfortunately, but you see these two neoprene mats, and then uh, we have uh, we have some minis. We have like the uh, we have this extra book of gruesome death. So if we die, I will go in and read you the gruesome death. We have a rule book that has all of the rules. Where is this? That's the base rule book. I had this set ready i promise then i went up to go to the bathroom before we started and now i'm just all discombobulated we have the series one rule book so instead of having all those little papers you can actually go through and see the special rule for everything hold on one second i want to make sure my camera is not doing this autofocus crap uh da, da, da. it is doing the auto exposure i can't get away from that sorry about that so that's a little annoying but we will not have autofocus so that's good um so it has like a set of all those little papers like all the rules you need to know are all in here with the flavor text which we'll get to with story time with greg and this is the fourth feature film i have featured so again i already had the hans uh feature film the, what was it, the the Camp Happy Trails, whatever. I already had the Frightmare on Maple Lane, and I already had the third one, which was the Carnival of Blood. Uh, I really like the Frightmare on Maple Lane. I know that's not, every, that's not everyone's favorite. I like the mechanic where you're kind of trying to find Dr. Fright. I think that's super cool. I think it's interesting. I really like the Han scenario. It's a little basic, but I think it's cool. It's interesting. It's uh, strategic. Uh, I like Carnival of Blood a little bit less, mostly because I think the trap mechanic in the Carnival is really like rough to deal with. I like Geppetto. I would like Geppetto in a different location. So the fact that you can mix and match is cool. This one's kind of the opposite for me. This one, like, I like the location a lot. I think the house is really cool. You'll see I have this. I'm sorry I can't get this pointing in the same direction. So the secondary camera is going to be a, a top-down view. I just can't get it set up the other way. But I wanted to give you a closer look of the map because there's a lot going on in this map, especially with the minis now. You'll be able to, I think, see things a little bit better. But I know it's like the orientation should be backwards. I just, I, unfortunately, I don't have the, the rigging to make that happen. But... I really don't like the poltergeist as a killer. You cannot attack the poltergeist. So a lot of the cards that you normally use are just now irrelevant. And you kind of need to win by doing a lot of searching. And if there's one thing that one thing one mechanic in games that I know I don't like, it is the idea of like, hey, whether or not you win or lose is gonna be how lucky you are in getting through your deck and finding the card you need. That's one of the reasons that the whole like villain series, villainous series, like doesn't work for me. Like it's 
it the whole game is like digging through your deck and finding specific cards and then trying to win i find that about marvel champions like a whole bunch of that game is digging through your deck finding specific cards making certain combos i find that about sentinels of the multiverse like that's just not like that kind of anxiety is not the anxiety i like in my gaming experience like i like anxiety of a certain sort but um it's just I don't find it very exciting. It's like, oh, I won because I got lucky and that was on top of the deck. The only time I've won this scenario was I literally got a helicopter and I found Carolyn and I got out from the attic where I started. Every other time, every other strategy I've tried has just been like not even close to succeeding. I probably should not be trying this on the extreme horror mode, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm a glutton for punishment. But we'll see. So we might run this back. We might play it twice. Uh, Alice might not be the greatest... No, she's fine. I, I, like, I can't imagine any of the, the final girls being especially great for this uh, scenario. There's just a lot of, like, hey, you're going to get punched in the face right off the bat. The events are really swingy. Um, but even then, I still – I don't hate the events. I still – I think I would like this a lot more with a different killer because the poltergeist this isn't really killing it for me. But, I, look, it'll be fun. We'll get it up. I'm excited to uh, feature this today, and uh, we'll see how we're going. But you'll see, again, these mats are super nice, man. Like, you have a spot for all the cards. It's just you have your play area. When you're playing your cards, you got your backpack stuff, the place for your events, your active. The, I don't understand why, like, this whole thing seems so unnecessary to me in the design for this game. So you have, like, these areas that say there were too many meeples on a space, you can be like, all right, the diamond's there, and I can put all the meeples in there. I've never felt the need to do that. So uh, that real estate area, I'm just going to basically put the the action I'm trying to do. That's where I'm going to put the card. I just, I again, they they have that the core box too, where they give you these like cardboard tiles. I, I don't, I don't really see the point of that. I think it's a little silly. But for some people, maybe. I don't know. They really, if anyone who uses those spaces for what they're intended, like, please let me know. I'm, <laughs> I'm super curious, but I, I have in the four feature films I've seen, I, I cannot imagine a time that that would be an absolutely necessary thing. So we have a space for our extra tokens. We have our scenario tokens here. We have our little, you know, uh, charges for items, uh, little wooden things. We have Carolyn. Uh, she's going to go there. So we do have a mini for Carolyn. Carolyn is linked to the Poltergeist, uh, as we'll see. So let me check out the chat. Do, do, do. Postcard, are we in the 70s or, <laughs> or something? And Brian says, dang, blinked out game. Looks amazing. Sad that this is one of those games that just doesn't click with me, which is fine. It happens. And it's my the face, Silver Fear. If you're looking to offload Maple Lane, I know someone who would love it. And Sajid, also, how is your dice luck these days, Greg? <laughs> well, I won a too many bones yesterday, pretty emphatically. So, you know, I am due to obviously get annihilated today. So one of the things that I think is a little bit of a miss on the map, but it's kind of, it's cool. I mean, I understand why they didn't want to make two mats. If you're playing on extreme horror mode, you are focusing on this outer track. So the color red is is equal to one die the color white is equal to two dice and the color green which is only in this one spot here is equal to three dice so you're going to ignore that inner track to some extent all right um so that's fine also we ignore that blue because since we're playing on extreme horror mode we're going to start on the five instead of the six we're playing with Alice. Alice comes with the Haunting on Creech of Creech Manor, and she's going to come in with four health, plus she'll have an extra health. Those are randomized. I do not know what they are, so I'm going to roll a d10. I rolled a 10. There's only nine tokens, so that's a really awful roll. I rolled a 10 again. That's an eight, so I'm going to put this as my final health. That might have one, two, or three extra health, but two-thirds of the time, it's going to be completely blankety blank that's right blankety blank is a very special kind of blank we're going to go ahead and set the item deck i'm going to shuffle the all the item cards from this uh from this location from creech manor and i'm going to take out 10 normally you would take out 12 but when you're playing as a poltergeist you kind of set up things a little bit differently so one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten we're going to set three cards aside like this, and then we're going to add Carolyn and Mr. Floppy. Mm, Mr. Floppy is a stuffed bunny. That's right, we're playing with stuffed bunnies because that's super fun. Uh, White Donkey, woo! Much excite! Hello, White Donkey, the Space Meeple. I got the Season 1 box a couple of weeks ago. An amazing bit of production. I agree the games are swingy, but they're short, so it doesn't feel so bad. Yeah, I definitely resonate with that. The fact that these games are so short, I 
makes me a, a little bit less grr. Uh, I, it just if I'm ranking things, you know, the fact that you can mix and match makes things a little different. But if I'm ranking just a feature film, you know, the box as a whole, so the killer that comes with it and the location, like the camp, Happy Trails, and Frightmare on Maple Lane are, are way higher for me than the other two. But I again, I do like Geppetto. I think if I put Geppetto in here, I think that'd be a really cool game that I would very much dig. Um, but I just find, you know, again, I find Carnival and I find Poltergeist for the to sw I find Carnival the swingiest location, and I find Poltergeist the swingiest killer. What I am gonna do, just so people know what I'm doing with with Final Girl, like I'll probably put it on like every three months or so. Is kind of my current plan. Uh, we will be featuring the Sacred Groves. And then there's a whole book, and I love this. See if I can get this pretty quickly. So all these bonus features, there's like literally, instead of you like, hey, figure out what combos work for you, which is fine. Like, I don't know, it takes a lot of time. There is, nope, these are the gruesome death books. There is a whole, where is it? I have so many <laughs> feature film. There's a whole like campaign book which recommends what you should play where. And that's, oh, um, it didn't fit. I know where it is. I don't know if I can get it easily. Uh, don't knock that over. Excellent. There is this whole book. So it's the lore and scenario. And it will take you through a series of recommended matchups, which I think is super cool. And I'm super excited to kind of just work my way through this. There's a bunch of them, including there is a sixth killer in season one. It's the birds from above. And AJ Perforio uh, was kind enough to give me that as well when he gave me everything else. So um, look out. I will be doing a giveaway of the three feature films I already had, plus the core box. Sometime in the next couple of months, my friend Charlie is borrowing that game from me for now. Uh, but I will be sure once I get it back sometime in two or three months, I'll do a giveaway and kind of get that out to somebody. They're also Finder Girl did just crowdfund. I don't know if they're in pledge manager phase or what. They did just crowdfund their series two. And I know there's plans for more. Um, so for especially for people that love the horror movie genre, I mean, your ability to get, get it all if you love it or just get the feature films that speak to you the most, the ones that you have the fondest memories of, I guess. <laughs> As a child, I remember when I watched that horror movie and it was so nice. Uh, you can go and buy whatever you want, which is super cool. All right. That's fine. I've been blabbing enough. So I shuffled the uh, – I have nine items in my hand right now. And I'm going to put three in each of these item decks. And we have Carolyn somewhere among these nine cards. And we have Mr. Floppy somewhere amongst these nine cards as well. We're going to take these three items. They're going to be face up on these three piles. So the lucky dice is on the face up is, is the top card of the item deck. That is the garage. The garage space is right here. We have the trash can lid lucky dice for what it does. By the way, it does, it can go in your backup. does not take up a hand slot. You can discard to reroll any number of your dice. The trash can lid, it, comes in with three charges you can spend one of those charges to ignore a damage that does take up one of your hands and then we have the mysterious pills does not take up any of your hands can be used right out of your backpack you discard this during the action phase and choose one of the following either reduce the horror level or to get two health back mysterious pills for the win we're going to take the setup cards i'm going to shuffle these up real quick we're going to roll the die i rolled a two this will be our setup card for today. We are in the Dancing Queen setup. So I'm going to put our mini here. It comes into play with two meeples. That's a very friendly setup compared to some of the crap I've been seeing. Actually, that is not our meeple. That is the poltergeist. <laughs> That's not me. And I am going to use the red meeple for the poltergeist. I just think it'll be a little easier and cleaner to see on the uh, table. By the way, yeah, my C920 is not working today because, you know, my computer has a mind of its own. Again, I think it's the Poltergeist. I blame her. We are going to uh, just have my uh, my built-in computer camera. So sorry, the quality is a little fuzzier than ideal. The Poltergeist is going to start in the garage. We're going to have two meeples in the attic. We're going to have one meeple here, one meeple here. Again, two meeples in the ball, the ball room. That's a tough word to say where I currently am, one meeple there, one meeple there. Now, all these yellow meeples represent victims, and we have one over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 victims on the board to start. This map has a lot of interesting features. So the exit spaces are only the outside spaces. You have three window spaces. You have a trophy room. You have an attic. The places where you can search are the garage. Again, that's where the lucky dice are. The trash can land is in the attic, which makes sense. And the mysterious pills are in the closet, which also makes sense. There are spaces, there are three spaces that are only one way. So if you're, I'm looking at the wrong camera because, you know, <laughs> that's what I do. Um, the three spaces, two, the two window spaces that go down to the ground. This space also goes down to the ground, but there's a ladder there. So we'll be able to get from outside back up there uh, as part of a movement if we so choose. And there are, but there is a one-way space from here down. So it's like a secret path from whatever that room is to down a floor. It would be amazing if we can get to Alice's ultimate ability. I have found that completely impossible with the setups that I have had so far. Uh, getting six of these 10 meeples off the board and saved, oof, I, I just, we would need to get exceedingly lucky, exceedingly, I don't know what I just tried to say, but it wasn't words, exceedingly lucky to actually pull that off. So we'll see. I'm not saying I'm going to, you know, not try it. But the reality is we need to find things in the search deck. So if we're trying to move to save people, we we also need to spend our time and our actions to search. Like there's a lot of competing interests and it's, I just can't see a way that it all comes together, especially with these events being what they are and the poltergeist being as brutal as she is for sure. We're going to go ahead and set our dark power for the poltergeist. So we have four cards. I do have the extreme event in here there also is an extreme event for the top half of the poltergeist too so i don't know it maybe there's one of the i have to look at the other boxes because i think with the most of the other killers there's only an extreme event for the bottom but i could be wrong so i rolled a four we have a dark power there and now we need to get our finale card again you get the finale card flipped over if you get through all 10 of the cards that will be in the event deck so we're flipping, we're rolling this. I got a two. This will go hither. There are spaces for the minor dark powers. Again, Poltergeist uh, appears, she only has two minor dark powers. Those would come from the event deck. Uh, we'll, if we pull them, then we'll add them to their appropriate spots. They will, I'm sure, I've not seen one yet, but I'm sure they will be no fun. Now I have already mixed together the event, the terror cards from the Poltergeist and the terror cards from the Creech Manor. So I'm just gonna shuffle this deck one more time and we're gonna take 10 off the top to constitute our terror card, terror deck for this game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. That will go here. And last but not least, we need to set up our starting event. The game does start with an event in play. Some of these events are downright brutal. I'm gonna roll a D10 just for the first one, and then we'll just pull the cards off the deck as we go when we need more events. I rolled a nine. Clingy victims, you must, I repeat, you must have at least one victim follow you if able. Don't leave me. Okay, I won't leave you. Ever. I promise. Because I am Alice. I think that's it. Yes? Correct. All right, we start the game. We have all six of the zero time cards. So we have a walk. We have a focus. We have a weak attack. We have another walk. We have another focus. And we have a short rest. All right. Do, do, do. Sajid, have fun, kids. Hope all goes well or bad, but entertaining. Both work. Cheers. Cheers to you, sir, with the winky face. Brian, I picked up that scenario book at PAX U. Excellent. Series 2 is on the water, I believe, says Space Meeple. Excellent. Brian Scott, the only thing I'm missing is Carnival. Before I, having seen it, I am not interested. Yeah, it's really swingy, man. Geppetto is cool, though. I dig Geppetto. The, the, the location, eh, not so much. Uh... So if here, I only have Camp Happy Trails and a core box. Makes sense. Andy Corbett. I mean, the nice thing, too, is you can just always add one for 20 bucks down the road. I mean, it's it's really reasonable. Once you have the core box, you made that investment. It's like you can kind of bling it out as you want. Andy Corbett, good evening. First time watching live. Looks like I'm in time for the start. You are. I mean, this might not be very long either. The first time I played this, <laughs> I lost on turn two. I had I lost two health on the first killer card i lost two health on the second killer card and that was it and that was unusual um but not nearly surprising enough for my taste <laughs> if you 
get what I mean. All right, Rocket Magnet, what's up, Lee? Did you get the Necronomicon mystery box? Also, it's got some dice in it to randomize setup. I did not get the Necronomicon mystery box. And I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with that word right now, but, you know, it is what it is. Brian, my issue with the scenario is the search mechanic. Yes! Yes, yes, I hate it. <laughs> it's, uh, I just don't like search mechanics in games, and I know people, some people love them. But I think I would rather a search mechanic where I know I'm not getting trolled. That's my problem with the carnival. It's like, I have to search for stuff to get abilities to win, and then you're just trolling me. Like, the game doesn't have that much action... Like, my action economy is so tight in this game that if you're basically making me do all these things and spend, give me such a high opportunity cost by you trolling me, like, that just never makes me feel good as a solo player. Like, I hate when games do that. Again, Robinson Crew does that crap. Like, just, oh, I get to do this thing. Oh, I succeed. Oh, I just get punched in the face and lose two health. Like, that's not great. Like, that's just not something I ever want to experience as I'm playing a game. That where difficulty of winning is already so damn hard. Look, if the game's super easy, you want to, like, kind of give me some, trip me up, like, fine, I guess. It's still annoying. But, like, when the game's already super hard, like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I just, I don't like that design choice. So, from what I've seen, Carnival's the only scenario, the location that does that. So, um, and Papersmith, I've never seen a full guys play it. Excited to see it go down. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> it might not be that long. So let's get to it. I have these six cards, and I will try to keep all the cards that are in my hand here. Remember, your hand limit is max 10, and we will, as I play cards, I'll put them in the play area, and I'll just try to be really methodical in going through the various steps of the game. Notice I have my little turn summary cheat sheet out here. Uh, Alan, also, which is your favorite villain? I really like Dr. Freight. And I know some people get really don't like that those cards. I just think Dr. Freight, that sleep and awake distinction, I find very interesting. Um, Geppetto, I think, would be really cool outside of Carnival. I haven't taken him outside of Carnival. I mean, Hans is fine, too. I mean, Hans is super vanilla as far as killers go. And uh, I don't think that's anything wrong with that. Like, there's enough other interesting things going on, you know, that are really just paying a lot of homage to the... Uh, to, uh, Homage, 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 homage to the uh, the <laughs> I'm struggling today, kids. Uh, the horror film genre that I think Hans is totally cool. Uh, Nemo's War has that to agree with the treasure tokens. Oh dear God, does it ever? Yes, Brian, good. <laughs> that's a good call, man. Oh, that's one of the things that just absolutely drives me nuts about that game. Yeah, the unmitigated swinginess of Nemo's War, as uh, I think Sajit coined the phrase. Someone, someone said it be at some point. Yeah, it's it's a big problem. Uh, for me, for sure. Um, but still dig Nemo's War a lot. But yeah, there are the certain quirks of that game that really drive me absolutely bananas. So let's make it happen. I'm going to try to deal with this horror. Oh, man. I, maybe. I normally do focus, focus. But okay, with the killer right there. Let me just take this off the board because it's confusing me. Uh, I'll put you over there, Mrs. Poltergeist. Uh, da, 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 we'll just we'll lay you down because normally, remember the killers normally have a uh, a health track because you can attack them. You cannot attack the poltergeist again. The only way you win is by saving Carolyn, which does bring me to the point that I probably should give you the promised and fan favorite story time with Greg. All right, Creech Manor. Creech Manor is over a hundred years old with the kind of character and historic charm that people love. It's the kind of home where every step, every new room can call to one's imagination a story from the past. But the stories of Creech Manor are filled with horrifying events, macabre happenings, and supernatural powers beyond human understanding. Go away, for evil reigns within. Dun, dun, dun. And then we have the poltergeist. How do you fight a poltergeist? Let me ask you something. How does one fight something you cannot see? It's simple. You don't. You get the hell out of there and you don't look back. You don't turn back. You don't do anything but run. If you do, it will ruin you mentally, physically, and emotionally. Then it will kill you. Oh, charming. And again, special rules. It says the poltergeist cannot be attacked. You do not win against her in the normal way. Instead, the only way to win against the poltergeist is to find Carolyn and save her by reaching an exit space while she is still with you. And we might also need to find Mr. Floppy. I will deal with that 
situation if it comes up. So, mm, I mean, part of me is tempted to try to save six. Because if I can save six, Alice's ultimate power is amazing. Choose one named action card for the remainder of the game. Whenever you play that named action card, always roll five dice, regardless of horror level or any other modifiers. Obviously, since I need to do a lot of searching, if I can save six, I would definitely choose search. <laughs> and always roll five dice. Whee! I mean, that would be freaking awesome. Remember, the, the victims will not normally follow you into a space where the killer is. So it might indeed make some sense to try to walk these victims outside immediately. So I think I'm going to change up my normal patterns here, and then I'm going to play a walk action. We're rolling. We're in the white on the extreme horror banner, so I'm rolling two dice. And two successes off the bat would be an amazing way to start. And we get one success. So I move one space. Uh, both of these guys will come with me. I have to take at least one because they're clingy. I only have to, I could leave one there. There's really no point to doing that. The bottom's really hard to get to. I'm not really eager to get back there. There's no searching that can happen there. And I am going to lose one time. So I go from five down to four because, again, I only had one success. The walk action is done. I'm going to walk again. Uh, if I roll two blanks, that'll be really bad, and I probably should restart. <laughs> Alright! One success! Excellent. I lose one time, down to three. We can walk. I can only take two. Remember, only two will follow me at a time. They're all scurred. Uh, otherwise, ooh, that could work out really well. So these two are now outside. So they're in an exit space, so I could drop them off. I'm going to move two spaces. with the, Or I can take a two or less action card. That sounds good. I'll take the sprint. Because Sprint is awesome. And then I will take... Uh, then I will move up to two spaces. I will move one back here. And then two. So now I'm in this area with two very scared meeples. And I took a Sprint card. Do I gamble? Gamble, gamble. Man, if I can get, that would be ridiculous. That would actually make me like the scenario so much more if there's actually a viable path here. <laughs> um, do, do, do. Thinking, I guess I take the sprint action now. Do I try to do some focusing? Yeah, if I roll two successes with the sprint action, that'd be nutty nuts. All right, let's do it. Sprint! Two successes, please. Anything but two blanks. One success. So sprint, I lose another time, so I'm down to two time. I move two. I'm going to go one, two, head over to this ladder. Because I don't really want to get to that window. The ladder means I can go up and down. And that would be better to, for me to get back in the house. So that's done. I have no more movement abilities. I definitely am going to need to buy another sprint next turn. And remember, a sprinting, I can move down. I can move down and move back up and, and drop them off on the way. Like, it's more of like an immediate drop off. I don't need to land in the exit space. I could pass through an exit space, is what I'm trying to say. I have these two focuses. I haven't done anything with that. If I miss, that's fine. But I only have two time left, so that's making me super nervous. There's a lot of these tarot cards that are really going to jack up this horror level, which is kind of why I'm, I'm pausing right now. All right, I have two time left. What I'm going to do is discard three cards. I'm discarding a short rest, a focus, and a weak attack. That's going to get me back up to five time. And then with my five time, I'm going to spend... Uh, I'm going to get spend three on a distraction, and I'm going to spend one on a sprint. And hope I get lucky next turn fantastic so we're, that was the planning phase where i spent that time to buy cards this is going to reset the five at the end of the planning phase these six level zero well these five level zero cards are going to go here and then the sprint card is going to go here 
We're going to put these back here. We go to the killer phase. The killer is going to do their action. The killer action is they're going to move up to the movement value. Their target is the final girl all, or a victim. They are going to, um, they're going to go to the closest person if there's a tie. And they're going to do one damage because, again, their bloodlust level is there. So their movement value and their, their damage value is always going to be equal to their current bloodlust level. So the closest victim, the closest anything, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, they're going to go closest to the most. I mean, I, so I could send them outside. But it's not going to matter, actually. So the movement of two, they're going one, two. The closest thing is five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So we managed to clear out all the victims nearby, the killer. They don't kill anybody because there's no one in their space. But we draw a terror card. It is something unholy happened in the roll the die. Here's where it goes bad. I roll the one. The victim transports immediately to the attic. It's going to kill a victim that is there. Every time a victim dies, we go put them in the dead space here. We get a bloodlust. The first bloodlust gives us an increase in the horror level. And now the second one is going to move toward the closest victim. There's already a victim in the space, so the killer is going to stay. The killer is going to kill another victim. Bloodlust goes up. The dark power card is revealed. Dark power card is eternal despair. Whenever you resolve a horror roll, so that's every freaking roll that you're doing. I'm looking at the wrong camera again. Lose a time for every one showing so again the one is just a little number so it's always a blank face so there are blank faces that aren't ones so if we have a blank face that also has a one we lose a time that could be pretty bad i guarantee you i'm going to forget to check that at least once so bear with me so two things are dead that could have been way worse we're still rolling two dice because we're still in this little white bar up here so you're saying there's a chance that's right we go back to the action phase do 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 how do you feed the boss here without attacking it? Oh, I should have waited three seconds. <laughs> Laugh out loud, Brian. I will say that watching you play your plays a fighter girl, I really appreciate the distraction card. Lots of benefits for very little cost. Yeah, I definitely do not want this to get to the red because that's just like bad. But I think I need to gamble right now with a sprint. I think that's my most important thing. Moving two spaces will be absolutely amazing. So I'm rolling two dice still. And one success. I also rolled a one. So I'm not going to re-roll anything because I can't. So I'm going to lose a time because I rolled a one because of Eternal Despair. I'm going to move two spaces. So I lose another time. I'm going to go down the ladder. Only two will follow me. These two exit. I'm going to get two time back. That's up to five. And then I'm going to move one space. That gets me up here. So I'm at five time. Mm, I don't have a lot of cards in my hand, which makes me nervous about rolling, because if I miss, it's going to be super bad. I will roll. I mean, it would not be ideal if this happens, but I can deal with distraction. So this sprint card goes there. Playing distraction. Two successes for the first time today would be super awesome. And discard two cards. I cannot. So I got no successes. I can lose four time and reduce the horror level one, or I can lose two time and gain a horror level. I'm going to do the former. I did not roll any ones, so I'm going to lose four time. I go from five down to one, and the horror level goes down to there. This goes here. I obviously have nothing else that I want to do right now. With one time, I'm going to grab... I'm going to go right to planning. I'm going to grab this close call for my one time, and then I'm going to grab all the zero time cards. So we have our short rest, our focus, our weak attack, our walk, and our walk back. These cards go back to their homes. That resets to five because of extreme horror mode, distraction, and sprint. So the nice thing about distraction is you can lose four, you can always, always, always reduce the horror level, but sometimes it might cost you four times to do it, and sometimes that's indeed worth it. We're going to do the killer action. The killer action is going to... Uh, this guy might not make it. Honestly, I might be tempted to try to run across the thing and go down this ladder. And then if I can get to extreme horror... Woof, if, I, if I can get to uh, ultimate ability like this early, that would be absolutely sick. It also will really prevent the killer from ever reaching that really terrible cycle. 
So we'll see. But there are also things that might get worse if I uh, have no victims on the board. So there's like a give and a take here. But obviously I've searched for nothing. So that's great. So the killer is going to do their killer action. They're moving toward the closest, which is going to be the final girl and this victim. And they're going to move one and two. And now they're one away from where we are. They cannot kill us. I don't think I missed any of the eternal despair things. I think I, I covered that. So we draw the second terror card of the game. Everything was flying around. So we gain a a um, horror level. Place the Voltageist with the closest victim. That is going to be where we are. Or in, a, in your space, if there are no victims, there are victims. It's going to attack either us or the victim. It will always attack the victim before it attacks the final girl. Victim is defeated. Bloodlust goes up. And that is that. So we're still rolling two dice, so we've gotten fairly lucky there. Do do do. Paper Smith, is this game hard to win? Um, this scenario I find very hard to win. I've only won it once. I get super lucky. But it just depends on the combo. And again, I'm playing on Extreme Horror, so that does make it harder. Paper Smith, yes, depending on dice rolls and event cards and tarot card draws. Also, he's playing in Extreme Horror mode. Thank you, Andy. So if you're the mat is so nice, yeah, the mat's really nice. I'm hesitant to get it with season two coming. Those use a different one. I have no idea. I I would be surprised if it's a totally different one. I mean, it really is the same system. It might be different art, but I'm not sure. Paper Smith, thanks, Andy. It definitely seems tough. I love the theme though. And so if you're yes, but you can play season one games in the season two met. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And you can play season two games on the season one met. Also makes sense to me. All right. Uh. I'm in an interesting spot. I really don't want to get... I have these walk actions. I really don't want to get too close to these victims. I'm still trying to save two. And if I stay where I am and the dude just attacks me, like, so be it. If I can get a guard. And it might make sense to do, like, focus, focus. Save all the time I can. Get a distraction and a sprint. Discard some cards and a guard. If I can get seven time, that'd be awesome. Because then I can get a sprint, a guard, and a distraction. And I'm really just ignoring searching right off the bat, which is a terrible idea. But remember, if next bloodlust, when this thing goes up, we're getting plus two on the horror thing. So this is going to be a mess. Like keeping this in the white at minimum is going to be super important. So let's see if I can get lucky with some rolls here. Two successes. I have not done it yet. Make it happen one time. Whoa, baby. Asking you shall receive. Excellent. So this goes here. And we get two times. So we're up to seven. Got all of that. Because it went for, it went, it just moved one over. But I got two time back because of the two successes. That was super fun. We're going to spend another focus. Try to get that down one more. A success, and if I discard two, another success. I don't want to discard two because it doesn't make any sense. Because it, it's just, I mean, it. I can disc. But even if I discard two, I'm get two time back, but I still only go down one. This way, I spend the time. Oh, but I guess that is mechanically better. Because if I spend the time and then discard the cards later and get two time, I'm only netting one time. If I spend the two cards now, um, I'm netting two time. If you follow that, great. If not, I can answer, I can try to clarify that in the chat. So I will spend the two cards. I'm going to discard short rest and weak attack to go this, go down one more here, and I get two times. So we're up to nine time. Nine times. So these cards will go sideways to indicate that I discarded them to turn the three into a success. I didn't roll any one, so I don't have to worry about eternal despair. And then this goes here. I think I chill. I'm not getting any level zero cards back. I already have the two walks, so that's fine. And with my nine time, <laughs> for, for those, I, I have Ver Ferris Bueller's, I'm looking at the wrong camera again. I have Ferris Bueller's Day off in my head where it's like nine times. I don't remember Ferris being absent nine times, but he was, damn it. Open your eyes. All right, we're going to go distraction for three. So this goes out to six. We're in the planning phase. So I'm spending time. We're going to go sprint. For two, that's down to four. We're going to get another sprint for two. That's down to two. And we're going to get a guard for two. That's down to zero. 
I will also discard one of these walks to get another close call. So essentially I spent 10 time. If he attacks me once, so be it. He's still only doing one damage with his, the she. The, if the poltergeist attacks me once, that's fine. This poltergeist is still only attacking for one damage. So all these are zero time cards. They're going to go in the zero, car, zero cost action space location on our beautiful mat here. And now we go to the killer's turn. The killer is in my location. The killer is attacking me. I don't even think I'm going to use the guard because I don't think I'm not worried about just one damage. So that's fine. I get punched for one. We're going to reset this to five, by the way, at the end of the planning phase. So I lose one health. Guess what? If I save another victim, I get a health back guaranteed. So not that worried. Had him attack me. That's great. Terror card. Don't screw me. Oh, that's freaking the worst. <laughs> Uh, that's really bad. I'm upset. If you are in a window space, I am. I lose one health. If there are victims in a window space, there are two. They are both killed. Bloodlust goes up two. That means that this goes up from two to four. If at least one victim was killed, it gets raised again. It goes up to five. And we pull an event, top event card. Uh, liquid Courage, victims will follow you into the killer space. So I set myself up to get to my ultimate ability, and uh, yeah, none of that worked. Wow. And now we are only rolling one die, and this is where the game just totally devolved into crap. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand why there are not 12 victims on the board. I know like a lot of the like Maple Lane setups have 12 victims. 10 victims on the board when you're just wiping two or three out at a time with the flip of a card is not enough, man. And it's so, it's very frustrating. I'm very frustrated. <laughs> that was really bad. And it's like, okay, well, I did all that for nothing. That's great. I mean, it's, it's not even worth saving this victim, I don't think. It's like, because it's not going to change anything over there. <sighs> I mean, yeah, why why even bother saving him? Why even bother? I'm four spaces from the attic. I need to get I just need to start searching, I think. Ah, oh, that was really frustrating. There is an event that adds victims. Obviously did not pull that. Even like a choice. I mean, I'm not trying to rag on the design all that much. I just, it, it's this, this isn't even a poltergeist event. This is actually uh, an event from the, the Creech Manor. Um, even give a choice. Like, I, I think, you know, do you think like a, like some of the events in Spirit Island, for instance, are brutal. They're brutal, brutal. But they often, the worst ones often give you a choice. So you can do this or this. And it's like, all right, cool. Like, or take a damage for each victim, you know, like, do something like is there's no there's just no agency with an event like that where in a way that's really jarring it's like oh things are going amazing oh um i have no chance so the everything i was trying to do i just basically wasted time where i could have been searching and i did a lot to get this down but oh now it's back up to five the good news is unless something else increases bloodlust it's going to be hard for poltergeist to to trigger her finale the poltergeist is absolutely going to be chasing me around this board pretty significantly. Uh, if I roll no successes there, I can move a space. Oh, woof. Walk. Yeah, I guess I play distraction. And hopefully I roll a success. I do. That will help. So time goes up to six. This goes down to four. I'm all of a sudden rolling two dice again. That was a clutch success. I'm not even trying. I'm sorry, dude. I can't. I can't save you. I can't. You're uh. You're just screwed. I'm gonna start going up this house. 
And uh, then we just search until I find Carolyn. Fantastic. So I'm going to roll two dice. Not a double success. But I could discard two cards to get one success. One, two, three. Oh, I'm actually one, two, three, four, five from the closet. And one, two, three, four, five, six from the attic. Oof, yikes. Yikes, yikes, and yikes. Um, I could discard four cards to move two. That's obviously not happening. I will discard two cards... I can move four cards, I should move three. Remember, the killer is moving three. I'll discard two cards to move two. Time goes down one, back to five, and then I move here and here. And hopefully I can move again. We'll play the sprint card. I really need to get at least one success here. I did not get a success. I do not want to get rid of this guard card. I can spend two time to reroll all my dice with close call, but I just need one five or a six. Or I lose a health, I move one space, I lose two time, and then my, I immediately end my action phase. Which I think makes more sense. I still have a guard card. I'm going to just do that. So I'm going to... No successes. I lose a time because I rolled a one, though. Ah, that's brutal. I'll use the close call to re-roll the one. It's a success. All right, great. So I lose one time. And then I move two spaces. We're going to go one, two. I'm up on the fourth floor. This is out. I have four time left, which is great. So again, that was a clutch close call. It was a genuinely close call. I have a guard here. I will spend my four time here. I'm going to spend three on distraction. I, I really need a search, but I, I really need to start. I need to keep that horror level down. So three on distraction. Oh, that's not great. No. Forget distraction. I'll spend... Uh, that, that's a zero. That's, yeah, three on distraction. It is what it is. I have to waste the last one. This is going to reset the five, and I'll get all the level zero cards. Walk, focus, weak, attack, short rest, and focus. Maybe I just hammer the time next turn and then hope I, I roll really well with guards just to kind of stay alive. Sprint, sprint, distraction, walk. Checking the chat. Doo -doo. Oh, good to know. I didn't back it, says Brian. So maybe I'll buy the season two mat at retail. Paper Smith, that's probably be the only time he rolls two successes. Haha. -ha. Brian, why indicate the cards are discarded and not played? Does it matter? Paper Smith says Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Silver says oof. Paper Smith, do we know what the killers are going to be like in the second season? I think there's like an alien one. Um, I think if you go to the, the crowdfunding campaign, I mean, there was definitely a lot of information already revealed, I think. I think. I could be wrong. Is season... Maybe it's, maybe I could be... Is season two not... I think season two is live already. But, again, someone could put it in the chat, like, exactly where they are in the crowdfunding. Um, excellent. The killer is going to move three. It's going to go over here. It kills this dude. Bloodlust goes up. There are no more victims on the board. Oh, wait a second. Did I go through where that killer, the victim was? The victim has to follow me because it's clingy. So he doesn't kill the victim, but the killer doesn't actually get anywhere. Yeah, and I actually I definitely went to that space. I won one, two, and then one, two. So now I have a clingy victim. Excellent. Terror level. I have to kill you. It told me to kill you. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next terror. Otherwise, all victims in space adjacent to you move one space. If there are any victims in your space, move move to your space. I'm sorry. If there are any victims in your space, you may play one action card that inflicts damage. Kill one victim for each damage, but do not increase bloodlust. Take damage for each victim in your space. Then they all panic. I uh, have a weak attack.
okay, I'll use the weak attack and I'll kill the victim. That's weird. I have one success. And then I would take a damage. Okay. So we've killed him. Bloodlust has not increased. And then I take a damage and I'm down to my final health. So there are no more victims on the board. That is fine, I guess. And that's still there. So if I could do distraction, 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 fo distraction, focus, focus, short rest, get my health back. Remember, I saved no meeples. Rough. All right. Distraction. We're back to the action phase. Oh, distraction. I could discard four cards to get down two and get two time back. And I have seven time to spend. I honestly don't hate it. I mean, this guy, I'm just going to be doing guards for the rest of this this game, I think. Then the focus goes away. Or I discard two cards. Get one time back. That goes down one. And I think I really need to get to be rolling three, especially if I'm having to search all these stupid decks. I'll discard four cards. Let's take a, a guarantee here. That goes up two. That's up to seven. Horror level goes down to with my seven time, we're going to get a distraction. Just the planning phase goes down to four. I'm going to get two close calls. That goes down to two. I have a walk here. Uh, with my last two, I will take a another guard. That goes down to zero. Again, I'm trying to save that final health if I can. This goes back to five. Distraction comes up here. I also grab the walk into my hand from the zero cost cards, and then these five go here. Killer phase. Uh, killer is going to move to my space. It's trying to do two damage. I'm playing a guard. I roll two dice. I just need one success to reduce the damage by two. I got one success. Did not roll a one, so we don't have to worry about that. Remember, this is reset to five, so even if I rolled it now, playing the guard, I would have to lose time with the Eternal Despair. So I reduced damage from two down to zero. We now draw the Terror card. It's a fake. Discard a random item. If you have no items, discard and draw. Discard this and draw the next card. Discard a random item. If it's no items, discard and draw the next Terror card. So it's a fake. So I'm discarding this and drawing. So I ignore the rest of this card. I discard this and draw the next tarot card. The windows and doors are slam shut. If you were inside, you may not move during the next action phase. So great, I'm stuck in the space of the killer. I draw an event, push to the pole, roll a die for each victim in a window. If the roll is a one through a four, the victim jumps and is killed. Discard this card. So this card just comes out of the game. It's because it's no longer in play. Not that any of these matter anyway. So I can't move, kids. Well, that's super fun. We go back to the action phase. Um, <laughs> great distraction rolling two dice two one success and I could discard two cards for another success that makes some sense oh, this guard card could have come back here no this guard card was played after the planning phase so it stays there so two successes I get two time this goes all the way to the the green space the only green space so that's going to allow me to um. Yeah, that's going to allow me to uh, to roll three dice. I do want more than just one guard card, so I'm going to stop there. I can't move anyway. I'm going to grab the retaliate card because that will allow me to reduce damage if I roll a success. That's going to cost me four. Obviously, I can't do damage back, but it is what it is. The long rest card is intriguing, but I will have a short rest card back, and I'll be rolling three. I have three more to spend. I will grab. I'm getting focus cards back. Arr! 
Improvise is fine. Now I'll grab a s search and I'll waste the one, but at least I can start searching the closet. I think I just hit the closet, go to the attic, hit the attic. Hopefully Carolyn's in one of those two spots and uh, we'll see what happens with Mr. Floppy. So this goes to zero, it resets to five. The walk, I take all these level zero cards too. So focus, short rest, focus, walk, weak attack. Walk goes here, close call, and a guard. Killer's doing their action, they're attacking me. I'm gonna use the retaliate card because it just makes a little bit more sense. Distraction should have come down here, so that would go back to here. So it's attacking me, I need one success. Oh, I roll three dice now, even better. I got one success, did not roll any ones, so I reduced damage from an attack by two, so I don't take any damage. That will go here. I don't lose any time. It's one of the nice things about both the guard and the retaliate cards. We draw the next terror card, roll the die. Wow. Take damage equal to your roll. I take two damage. I uh, I kill that many victims. There are no victims. Hold on a sec. A little bit of a coughing fit. All right, we're good. Uh, so I have to... I only rolled a two, which is good. If I rolled a six, it's bananas. I would need to do the guard. So I can defend as normal. There's not enough victims, so I must choose to take damage. So I'm going to take damage. I'm rolling three. I'm playing the guard card. And rolling. I rolled one success. I... Did roll a one, however, so I lose a time, and I reduce the damage I would have taken by two, so the guard card gets played, and now we're at four time. Checking the chat. Doo -doo -doo. I did say a three-killer cultist scenario, says Brian. There's no joy left in his voice, says Paper Smith. <laughs> it's pretty bleak, says Brian. <laughs> Santa Rose. So did you be rolling more dice because of the final health token? I was thinking that too. Huh? If I'm at my final health, I roll one more die. Is that a thing? Really? <laughs> I'm good, guys. I, I I know rules. Is that a thing? You're kidding, right? Do to do. Why don't I know things? I never don't think I ever knew that rule. I mean, I this this rule book's fine. But sometimes. Somebody find it in the book. Let me know, please. Very important. Place the final. I guess that makes sense, because why else would the icon be there? That's crazy, dude. That is crazy. We always need the H2. Resolving card effects. Icons. I don't know where that would be. I mean, I've been at the one health for like a long time, too. The only thing that could have messed up, if I rolled ones, that would have been really bad for that. So I'm not going to... The final health. If either the final girl and or the killer only has one health token remaining, you may roll one additional die for all your horror rolls, plus two if both are shown. This is indicated by the one. If additional health is recovered since they, they have more than final health token, the benefit is lost. Fascinating. Page 28. Excellent. Thank you. Says Sam. It is optional, so I'm going to play that I just didn't choose that option because I'm worried about rolling ones. But that's fantastic. Yes, you roll plus one is indicated on the token. If you're dealt down to one, you roll plus two. If you're the you're the best big fan, so Sam. <laughs> thank you, sir. Dude, that's awesome. Um, yeah, man, that's cool. That's, so, yeah, it is optional. You may roll one additional, and if the killer is down to the final health, you can roll two additional, as uh, as Andy just said. Sorry, I missed that rule. That was uh, that's a that's a game changer. Yeah, now I got excitement on my voice. <laughs> it. I don't think it affect any single roll. I've been rolling fairly well. I, I could have maybe saved some discards and stuff, so uh, if anything, it was a detriment, but unless I would have been rolling ones, because, you know, it is me, and I tend to roll ones. My problem is, I'm only going to be able to defend once, so I probably should do a short rest action. 
to get my health back, because I'm only going to be able to pick up the one guard. I'm going to roll four dice, guys, because I have one health left, and apparently I can roll four dice. <laughs> oh, games. Oh, I rolled one success and two ones. That's uh, that's terrible. Terrible. I'm going to... Oh, so bad. It's really bad. That's... I can discard two cards, but I'm losing two time, which is, like, just brutal. Brutal. All right. I'm going to discard the weak attack. Oh, that could actually be... Oh, I'm discarding the weak attack, and I'll discard one of these focuses. So that's two successes. That means I heal two. I lose the benefit of that health. I do lose two time because I rolled two, rolled two ones. I have eternal despair. <laughs> Seemingly appropriate. And that's done. I'm going to roll the walk action. See if I can't get a search done this turn. Now I again I'm not at my final health, so I can't I can no longer roll plus one. I just want to walk one space. I rolled one success and no ones. Perfect. I move one space. I do lose a time down to one time. And we will go ahead and do my first search. Because that's a thing that needs to happen. I guess I could have gone and searched and gotten the two health. But I don't know. Uh, the Mysterious Bills will give me some extra flexibility if I succeed. Wow. <laughs> that's really bad. Um, What a terrible roll. Wow. That's interesting. I rolled a one, too, which is abysmal. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to do. If I discard two, I go to zero. I won't have any time to take cards. I do have three health now. The killer is definitely going to get me down to one health. I mean, I guess I shouldn't have searched. <laughs> this is awful. If I use close call... I mean, I think that immediately ends. I don't even know if I get to carry out the rest of the action. Action phase immediately ends. So if I lose close call, I could re-roll dice. Do I move it down two before or after the re-roll? I think I would have to do it before the re-roll, if I'm understanding the rules right. I can take the top card and add two, which isn't awful. Lose two time immediately ends. But then if I lose two time again, it immediately ends again. I, I have the one there. Like, oh, this is all bad. I should not have rolled. Wow. That didn't work out well, kids. I'm going to uh, play the close call. I'm down to zero time. I'm going to reroll this one. It's a success. That's so much better. I'm still going to get down to zero. So the phase immediately ends. I don't. I wouldn't have the money to buy any cards, but I can take the top item from my space, which is a Mysterious Pills. And that will go there. And then hopefully I don't get attacked twice because I do not have, will not have the defense, but I get to keep this focus. So this is technically that this goes down to uh, to zero. I have no time left in the planning phase. I can't buy anything. I'm gonna get the walk card. So I have a focus card and a walk card, which is garbage. Close call. Guard retaliate. And then all of these are fours, or or zero times. So that was not great. And this search card will also go back. Killer phase. Killer comes in and does two damage to me. 
And then we go to the tarot card. Unseen forces. If Carolyn is with you, discard and draw the next tarot card. She is not. Your first space moved. Each action phase is panicked. Discard, discard when you find Carolyn. So what that means is it took me a second to figure out the rules on that. So what that means is when I go to move, uh, instead of moving where I want to move, I have to roll a die for a panicked move as if like the victims, what they do when they're panicked. I'm looking at the work hammer again. Um, and uh, we'll try to make that work. My turn now, this is still down here. I have five time. What I'm going to do is discard the focus card to get up to six time. And then with that six time, I'm going to get two guard cards and a search card. This goes out to zero, so I'm going to write the planning. This comes out to five, and then I'll take these six cards or four cards, whatever it was, that was left there. Focus is going to come back here. I'm going to discard the mysterious pills to get two health back. And live a little bit less dangerously there. Thank you, Mysterious Pills. I still need to search through that closet deck. Killer is going to try to attack me. I'm going to play a guard card. I'm rolling three dice. I'm not at my final health, so I still only roll three dice. I'm rolling super good. I'm going to discard my weak attack and my short rest. Uh... I'll discard my yeah weak attack and short rest, I think, still makes the most sense. That gives me a star. I didn't roll any ones. So the time stays at five. I reduce the attack by two. This will go here. Now we draw a tarot card. Nothing is as it seems. If Carolyn is with you, discard and draw the next tarot card. Otherwise, shuffle each item deck and reveal the top card of each. This is interesting. So we're shuffling. Revealing the top card of each. And if it's Carolyn or Mr. Floppy, I take two damage. Lucky dice come back on top. I assure you, I shuffled. <laughs> it is what it is. The trash can lid comes back on top. Oh, that's silly. I'm just going to roll a die. Forget this. Uh, I'll, I'll redo both of those. That's, that's absurd. I rolled a six. There's only three cards in this deck. So the top one is the first aid kit. I'm going to redo this. <laughs> I'm going to roll a die for it's Carolyn. There we go. And we'll reel this. And it's a one. It's lucky rabbit's foot. Now I'm not sure. Now I know what Carolyn's in the attic, right? So that's clutch. That's all I really needed to know. Um, I take two damage, but I can ignore, I can reduce damage taken by two. That doesn't, I could be used at retaliate has to be used from an attack. Guard can be used anywhere. That is one of the reasons I had to use Retaliate before the way I did. I'm going to try to reduce the damage by two. Now, if Carolyn and Mr. Floppy were revealed, I don't know if I have to take two damage for each. I don't know. It's a little ambiguous. Uh, I rolled two success. I ignore all damage. Excellente. So, let's go here. Angel says, I had a good weekend. Beat Hans with Lori next to the Extreme Horror. Nice. And Brian, is winning this really down to a search action where you may never find Carolyn? Absolutely. Sam, I am too afraid of Extreme Horror mode. Almost have beaten every Season 1 killer location combo on normal difficulty. Very excited for Season 2. Andy, reroll your one die using close call. That's what I did. Maurice, what's up, bro? This is a hard game to find without buying the whole set. Yes. Although, if you go on Van Ryder's website, I think they have them all available separately. So you might want to check that out. I think it's like 20 plus shipping. Brian, the game steward has all Kickstarter copies available. No affiliation here. Just brought from them once. Maurice, thanks for the plug on that. Didn't realize this game was going to be that hard to find. Sam, that's where I got season one back day one for season two. Excellent. Well, I know Carolyn's in the attic. So I had, I'm sorry, when they both came the same freaking thing, I was like, let me roll it. That's why I, I usually roll the die for small decks. It does not feel like <laughs> random enough for me. So it gave me two damage, but it, I, it did tell me where, the, where Caroline was. Um, so that's actually really clutch. And I am three spaces from the attic. And I'm rolling three dice still. So let's go get Caroline, kids. 
So it's one, two, three up, one, two, three down, and then down. The killer is moving three, so the killer will easily get to my location. And there's a number of tarot cards, though, that make me discard Carolyn. So you have to be aware of that. So I'm doing a walk action. Rolling three dice. Two successes would be awesome. Excellent. I did roll a one, so I do lose a time. I lose another time, but I move two. I'm here. This is still way down. The killer's going to get to me anyway. I need to get a... I have three health. I, I really should get a retaliate. So what I'm going to do is... And I'm not going to get a walk back. Put this walk over here. But one... All right, I'm going to discard this focus. Get up to four health four things and I'm going to get the retaliate because I need to block some damage and then I'll grab this focus and then these cards are going to come here, here two guard cards are here spent down to zero, back up to five, killer moves into my space, is attacking me, I'm rolling for the retaliate, I roll three dice, please give me one success, oh that's <laughs> That's just a horrendous. I rolled a 1-1 one, one, and a 4. I'm going to discard the walk and the focus card to get 1 star. I reduce the attack by 2, so I take no damage, but I did roll 2-1, so that goes down to 3. Eternal Despair, for sure. Last Terror card. Place the Poltergeist in my space. It's attacking me. I lose 2 health. If you take any damage, all your moves during the next action phase are panicked. So that's only for the next action phase. We now reveal the full terror card. Nothing is easy. All zero action cards now cost one. Place the poltergeist in my space and it attacks me every turn. That's about right. And all we do is, we, so we never have to draw a terror card anymore. We just carry out that action and we have to deal with all of that garbage. So the, the fact that I'm down to three is really bad. Um, but it's just attacking me once every turn, so I have that to my advantage. I only have three time. There's no sense in me trying to leave here, so I'm going to spend the two on guard and one on the close call, and then I'm going to get these cards back, so a short rest, a weak attack, a focus, and a walk. Retaliate comes here. Focus and walk are here. The killer's action is very simple. They're just attacking me. Oh, that's wrong these all cost one time now <laughs> that's amazing so I'm not going to take any of them because I can't afford that right now I need the guard and the close call if nothing else to make sure I don't lose I only have one health left and again I do not oh I could be rolling one more die because I'm at my final health uh, yeah great so I'm rolling four dice that should help with close call, but again, more opportunities to roll a one. So the killer goes to my space, acts surprised, and is attacking me for two damage. I'm playing the guard card. I'm rolling four dice because I'm down to my last health. I roll two success. I ignore all damage. Did not roll any ones. Fantastic. We go back to the action space. That would have reset the five at the planning space. With my five, I'm going to spend two on guard. Down to three. I'm going to spend one on walk. Down to two. I'm going to spend one on short rest. Trying to get some health back. Probably be smart. And my last time, I will spend one on close call. This resets the five. Killer phase. Killer's going to my space. It's already there. I'm spending a guard. I'm rolling four dice. I rolled no ones. I block all damage. This guard card should have come back here. This one goes here. So I just need to keep cycling a guard card every turn. On my turn, I'm going to walk into the attic. I'm rolling four dice. Sure. Sure. I rolled a one, so that loses me a time. I got one success, that loses me another time, and I move one space. 
I know I'm going to need to spend two time on a guard. Maybe I don't search just yet. I'll do a short rest. I'm rolling four dice. I didn't roll any ones. I got one success. I could discard two cards for a second success. And I wouldn't have to lose any time. I think that makes sense. I'll just gamble that I can roll one success for there. So I'm going to spend two cards for the four. I have two successes. That gives me two health. And I don't lose any time. And then with uh, four time left, or three time left, what I'm going to do is spend two on the guard and then one on the walk. These get reset here. Walk, guard. The poltergeist goes to my space. Fantastic. It's attacking me. I'm playing the guard card. Short rest should have been here. I'm rolling three dice because I'm down to I don't I'm not down to my final health anymore. Uh one success and two threes. I reduce the attack by two. That's done. On my turn, this should have reset the five at the end of the planning phase. I will search. Oh, shoot. My first move... My first move each action phase should have been panicked. Uh, when the heck did I move up there? So I only moved one, so it's not hard to figure out. So my first movie is phase should have been panicked. I rolled a three anyway. Great. That going back in time. I went back in time. <laughs> I went back in time and I rolled a three. And the three through six gives me north. If it didn't, it would have just it would have been easy to figure out where I should have been. Honestly, two thirds of the time I'm rolling what I needed to get into there. So that's fine. I'm now doing a search. I'm rolling three dice because I'm searching. I'm gonna try to finally grab Carolyn. I Wow. I rolled a one, a two, and a three. I only have one card left. So I'm going to take the top item card from my space. The, it does take up a hand because I'm dragging Carolyn around with me. And that means I take the top item. This The horror increases two because, of course, it does. And I lose two time. That gets me down to three. Um, we're going to be done with that. When Caroline joins you, remove all minor dark power cards. So this goes away. You must escape with Caroline. Caroline cannot be killed or discarded for any reason. You cannot place Caroline in your backpack. Because, you know, yeah, carrying a kid in your backpack would be really kind of cruel. I have three time left. I'm going to spend two on this guard. And... That gives me down to one, and I'll spend one on another. I'll spend one on a close. Nothing's panicked anymore. So I'll spend one on a close call, and hopefully we can win this in two turns. Search is going to come over here. Guard comes here. Killer is attacking me. I'm going to play the guard card. I'm rolling three dice. This resets the five at the end of the... Planning phase, I rolled one success and two threes. Fantastic, reduce the attack by two. This comes over here. Action phase, I'm going to play the walk. I'm rolling three dice. Again, it's no longer panicked. I rolled two ones and a five, so this five goes down to a three because, again, the eternal despair. I move one because of the walk card, and it also costs a time, so we're down to two time left over there. I'm going to spend that two time in the planning phase to get a sprint. No. One, two, three. Yeah, I, tried, I think I just try to win this next turn. I'll try to win this next turn. So I, I got a sprint. The killer gums into my space, does two damage. We go back to the action phase. That reset to five days of the planning phase. I'm playing the sprint. Two successes for the win, please. Huzzah! I rolled a one. That goes there. I have three movement. I go one, two, 
three. Um, there. Oh, Carolyn should have been with me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should be holding your hand. So she's there with me. We're out of the exit space. I escape with Carolyn, and we win. <laughs> I don't like the poltergeist that much, guys. Sorry. It's fine. It's like. I mean, it's it's one of those things, like, one of the things that does, I think it was uh, Z Garcia that said this a long time ago, so I'm kind of stealing from him, but, like, sometimes, like, when the game's trying to do something, like, for bad, but it kind of helps you, um, the fact that, you know, Carolyn was revealed, it saved me a lot of grind, right? So if that didn't have that tarot card in play that, re like, made me shuffle and reveal the top item and then I took damage, like, you know, realistically, I could have kept cycling through these guards, this was fine. There's no more people dying. Bloodlust isn't going up. And then I'm just grinding through these item decks. I mean... I, I, I don't know. It almost like this needed to be have a special item to, like, reveal Carolyn. But maybe give me, like, a, give me, like, a critical blow card. Like, replace the critical blow with something that's, like, you know place Carolyn in a random space, like roll a die, and then Carolyn's there, and then you go get a search wherever she is. I think that would have been a lot better. Um, grinding through 12 items, hoping that you're rolling well just to get it, it it doesn't, it's just a miss for me. And the Poltergeist is cool, the art's cool. I mean, even the minor powers, the minor dark power, I mean, I, had a, I forgot a couple things that I was playing, but like, you know, I got there... You know, I wonder if this final health, I would have had two health left. So that that was, you know, I had some cushion there that I didn't know I had. Um, I just really uh, find a lot, some of the choices really questionable in just the design of that. Like, it's just a, it's a very grindy game. Now, what you did see from a strategy standpoint, being able to prevent, like, saving as many hit victims as I did, preventing the poltergeist from really advancing into that awful cycle the fact that she was only doing two damage to me every time she attacked she never got up to the three that really helps because now guards are like a viable option so there was something to like this starting setup was i find the probably the easiest setup from what i've i've seen i've only seen three or four of them the one where you start in the attic was the one i won there's one that starts in there's three victims in the attic which is like to me that's insane because it's so hard to do that and then like there's like a, I got an event where it's like everyone in the attic dies and you're like oh so three victims are dead like right off the bat of the game the bloodless went up three the dark power is revealed this moved over you're one away from it going over two more it was like such a horrible cycle that uh you know it's fine the ghost hunters are weird like three of the victims are replaced by these guys um and they won't follow you, and the first one, it won't follow you until one of them is killed, and the first one that's killed, it goes up two bloodlust and not not just one, but at least I kind of like that thematically, that's a cool little wrinkle. But the one that just killed everyone in the attic, in combination with that, was was this uh, this setup card, it was really, really brutal, in a way that it wasn't great for me. The helicopter rescue, I thought was really funny, but it also kind of, so basically, the helicopter rescue, the helicopter goes there, and now it's considered an adjacent space, so you can spend the move action to enter it, and if you have Carolyn, you can win that way. If not, it's a way to save some victims, and the helicopter flies away. Um, so that's like a, again, thematically, it was like a funny moment, but uh, overall, you know, it was a, it's a, I won, but it's like, it seems like a little, a weird kind of grindy kind of win that uh, I'm not sure is uh, kind of hitting the spot that, you know, some of the other scenarios I played have hit. I feel like these totally random, but I feel like these <laughs> these sleeves I have are not all the same size. Huh. Strange. And now I know. It's just that one. Are you an imposter? Are you an imposter sleeve? Yeah, I think this is a, a sleeve that's of a different size. So, uh do to do this is where I guess he's one. Andy Cody, should that last movie panicked? Yeah. All moves should be from the minor power. Yeah, thanks, guys. Sorry, I missed it. Uh, Andy Corbett, good recovery. Great win. Paper Smith, just barely. Wow. Brian, excellent win. Brian, Silver Fear, the other Brian. Woohoo! <laughs> and uh, Brian Scott, like, it would be nice to have a special search card with three successes option. Yeah. 
for sure. And of course, I've seen many comments on this game. People give up when they are losing bad. Once the tarot cards are gone, it's rare that the horror increases. If you're on three dice, you've got a chance at the end. Paper Smith, maybe the reason you don't hear people talking about this one as much is because it's not as fun. Yeah, people seem to really talk about Hans a lot. I've heard a lot of negative comments about Frightmare, and I, I still, it's probably my favorite. It, I really just dig what it does, and I find, like, the events, and I, it also could be because I have more of, like, a emotional touch point. Like, not that I was a huge Freddy Krueger guy, but I watched a couple of, you know, Freddy Krueger movies. Like, I probably watched more Freddy than any other, like, horror genre. So, like, to me, I have, like, more of, like, a touch point with that, so that, that could make a big difference. I never really watched the Poltergeist movies or anything like that, so... Um, that eternal despair card. I mean, the way I roll ones, <laughs> it's just freaking brutal. But I'm excited to check out Sacred Groves. Um, so that will be with like again two three months for sure, and then we'll just you know. I mean, honestly, at some point, you know, I could start just planning on doing two, two a day or a two a two a two a live stream. Uh, had I lost, man, we don't even get. A satisfying, gruesome death. I mean, <laughs> the gruesome death things are crazy, man. General kill. Oh, I think you can kill. Oh, that's crazy. So every time someone dies. Oh, this is Hans. I guess you should read one for each victim that died. It's hilarious. Yeah, because they all have different names. That's really funny. General deaths. The trees are alive. I'm not sure how to use this book, to be honest. I'm maybe not smart about it. Is it from the events? General deaths. These might all link to the different events that come up. Stoppable. Yeah, got it. Got it. That makes sense. So when you're going through, like if 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 something dies from like what I don't know what a general kill is, I guess you would just roll a die and then you would read the corresponding thing. I was thinking you would only read these if the uh, final girl died, but nope. Items, events, Cre uh, creeps, matter, terror, and then events. Got it. That makes sense. Poltergeist Terror. So if someone dies based on any one of these cards, you can go in there and read the uh, the gruesome death. So maybe that's something I'll try to incorporate more next time. But yeah, it's cool. It's nice, nice little flavor for people who are kind of into that extra kind of stuff. Uh, Andy Corbett, I think Geppetto's puppets are very creepy and a good mechanic. Yeah, I like Geppetto a lot. I just don't like him. I just don't like him in the carnival. But yeah, I think if I... I think Geppetto and Creech Matter, I think would be a combo that I would dig uh, a fair amount. So general kill is when the killer kills a meeple from their special action. Yeah, cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, I, I was just thinking it was just like a finale thing that you read if the final girl dies. I didn't realize, like, no, you can actually read after every victim dies. So I, I owe you guys six, you know, <laughs> six gruesome death stories <laughs> for next time, which is great. But this was super fun. Thanks again to Van Rider Games. I don't know where this game, like, lands for me. Like, I, I really, I've been thinking a lot, you know, as we get into close to April, I'm thinking more and more about what I'm doing with the, uh, the, uh, my top solo games list. And, I mean, this is, it wasn't on there last year. It's definitely moved up for me, despite my, like, you know, quibbles. But there's definitely a lot I like about it. I just kind of wish some things were a little bit better. But the production value is great. You know, obviously, it, it you know, they've their support of the channel does mean something. So if you want to talk about bias, I mean, I'm definitely I'm not trying to hide anything there. But um, you know, some of the some of the ideas just don't work. And I again, I think you give me Geppetto here, I think that would work. I don't see myself playing against the Poltergeist very much because I just I don't like the focus entirely being on again this kind of search grindiness. But um, yeah, I think Andy's totally right. For like once you yeah once once you get through the terror deck like there's nothing else crazy happening, right? So now you're just like all right, well what's the killer's action? Well the killer's only attacking me. It's just like if I can keep giving myself guards and retaliates to prevent damage, you know at that point it's just a matter of 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 time before until I get a really horrible string of rolls, uh, such that the guards are no longer effective or I complete 
my mission, which in this case was to to save Carolyn and get her the heck out of that crazy house. Do to do. Uh, Paper says, "What's wrong with the carnival?" I never played this game, so I'm curious. I personally don't like the item deck. The item deck is filled with traps, and I find that a very unfun way to play the game. Because it, you know, if you're putting me in a place where it's like, well, I'm not even going to search for things then, because like the danger is too high. <laughs> You know, and it's like a significant portion of the item deck is traps. It's like a third of the deck or a quarter of the deck. So you're you're kind of left in this impossible situation where, like, a big part of the game is finding items. And and now it's like, well, finding items comes with a tax that's probably too high to pay. Um, yeah, I just, I, I just don't like that part of games. And, like, we were talking about Brian... Or Silver Fear and I were talking about that earlier. Like other games do it. Nemo's War does it to some extent. Robinson Crusoe does it a lot. But that was kind of you know, hey, you spent all this you spent all this action and time and resource to do this thing and you succeed. Oh, you really don't. You got punched in the face instead. Like that never really flies for me in a game. So and I think Carnival's the only scenario that I've seen that does it, like as a primary part of what it's trying to do. Uh, Andy, I saw one playthrough where the strategy was only to play two actions at each round and then either discard the remainder for time or retain them for the next round. Interesting strategy. Yeah, it, could, it definitely works. I mean, there's learning to spend the cards for the time to buy what you want is, is such a huge part of what's going on. Brian, good game, Greg. Off to play some Button Shy games. Ship Space, Rove, and Rage More. Have a great day. Those are some more titles. Yeah, Button Shy sent me two more games. I'm going to get them on the channel tomorrow, so that's a great segue. Uh, I do. I'm very interested in Rove, so I'll I'll, I'll reach out to my contact there and and uh, see about getting some more button shy stuff in the future. But yeah, check out tomorrow. I'm gonna have fishing lessons on the channel. It's like fishing lessons, is like a it's a quick little thing. I, I don't really love it. I I kind of I, there. I'll have some thoughts about fishing lessons tomorrow. It's designed by Scott Alms, who's the same guy who made you know um, space space. Uh, well, I'm at Warp's Edge, so like you know, he's made some great solo games. It's fishing lessons. This doesn't work for me, but uh, Wild Tales I think is a very interesting game. It's designed by Dustin, whatever his name is, and the other the two guys that designed um, Battlecrest. So yeah, a much bigger fan of that. So I'll get both of them on the channel tomorrow. Friday we got a playthrough of Spirit Island, so we'll wrap up the week that way. The next week got a bunch of stuff planned for Mage Night, Set a Watch, Cloud Spire, my top ten for January is coming out next week. So I still got to film that. So lots of crazy things as we wrap up the first month of 2023 and move on into the rest of the year. So all good things. Sorry about this glare. That's annoying. <laughs> it's annoying me. So I'll take that off the channel, but hope this is great. Any questions, comments, epiphanies, put, uh, put up great for you. I thought it was great for me. I guess we won. Um, any questions, comments, epiphanies, put them in the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, whatever that is, thanks for joining me and happy gaming. Sorry.